Rome wasn't built in a day. I don't say that to discourage you. I just thought I would mention that from the outset. Classroom organization doesn't necessarily take a lot of time, but you may not be all done when back to school rolls around. Thank you for joining me today as I talk about how to boost classroom organization in seven easy steps. When I was getting my classroom organized, I often looked at the classrooms of other teachers in my school and compared them. Yes, that comparison, you know, the thief of joy. I was comparing my teacher classroom organization ideas to teachers who had been at it for decades and they were still making tweaks. How would I catch up? Never, obviously. As an example, I remember one colleague who, as the first day of school approached, said, Whatever isn't finished now waits for next school year. Of course, being obstinate, I decided she was wrong. Well, she wasn't entirely, I mean, I did reorganize my entire classroom mid-year that one year, so it isn't impossible, but I won't do it again either. Classroom organization is an essential part of classroom management. So don't expect perfection in the first year or any year necessarily. Just do your best one step at a time. Hey there teachers, Marian Busfield here with Engaging Curiosity. Thanks so much for joining me here for one of my weekly videos. As a faith-led, retired classroom and SPED teacher, my passion is to support you on your journey to calm classroom chaos and elevate student engagement in ways that free up your time outside of the classroom. Despite my passion for teaching, my transition from learning support into the classroom filled me with fear and trepidation. I knew at least some of my weaknesses and that left me with some imposter syndrome. Fortunately, as a former SPED coordinator, homeschool parent and teacher, literacy interventionist and program coordinator, and most importantly, wife to a high school teacher and mother of two, I brought decades of diverse experiences with me that I'm here to share with you. As I applied everything I learned, classroom management became a breeze and teaching became everything I had believed it could be. I have bolded it all down to five pillars of classroom management upon which everything else rests. To find out more about those five pillars of classroom management, download my free classroom management checklist. The link is in the description below. For now, let's get back to today's topic. So let's talk first about effective classroom organization with the teacher in mind. I have ADHD and I am not naturally organized, but I have been able to learn over time. In fact, in order to, sur to survive teaching among the constant distractions and interruptions in a primary classroom, I had to learn to be organized. For me, that meant bins for classroom organization with labels and many, many binders full of units. My digital organization on Google Drive had files with hyperlinks to other related resources and units. The year at a glance was hyperlinked to take me directly to the folder in my drive. I also had five physical bins for classroom organization labeled Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. The materials I needed to teach a lesson were put into the bin for the appropriate day. Each night before I left, I would organize the bin with what I needed for the next day. The last thing I would need went on the bottom of the bin. This quite literally made it easy for me to sleep. If I called in sick, I could quickly email a more thorough lesson plan to the secretary to hand to the sub. The lesson plan was then just provided more detail and background information. Even if I had planned something I really needed to be there for, I could shift my week around and tell them which bin to get the appropriate materials for. Using bins for classroom organization for planning meant being sick never cost me instructional time. Easy peasy is another way that classroom organization made for lower stress teaching as no instructional time was lost in my absence. Two, establish clear, clear routines and procedures. So consistent daily routines for transitions, materials and procedures make transitions go smoothly. A part of my classroom organization is having everything I need for instruction on a single day in a bucket that I just pull from. This may include papers that are associated with the activity However, when students need dice, rulers, plastic covers for their game board or whatever, we run through what they need together, but it is their responsibility to quietly and respectfully 
gather their tools. In order for this to happen, the students need to know where to find everything and to have practiced how to meet classroom expectations while they get everything they need. I'm not saying it was silent, I'm saying it was quick and efficient and organized. Routines are essential to effective classroom organization. So three, use creative organization ideas for special areas. I had the privilege of having a couch in my classroom and reading nooks. A little bit of carpet and a low bookshelf along the back of the couch created a nice cozy reading area. Where possible, create special places where your students can relax and will love to gather together. A fond memory for me is seeing a row of the backs of my students' head bowed over their books as they gathered to read during their spare time. Four, consider reducing the visual noise. Effective classroom organization includes consideration of the visual noise that too many colors, papers, anchor charts, and so on can create. Notice that student work was not on that list of visual noise. Student work is an integral part of the classroom organization that makes the space the give the students a sense of belonging. But to reduce the visual noise, choose the background for your artwork carefully. Neutral unpatterned paper on my bulletin boards combined with black construction paper as a frame for each student's art, work of art were my choices for keeping the visual noise down. Classroom organization of anchor charts and other instructional materials. I believe in the importance of anchor charts to support visual students. And I also believe in minimizing the visual noise for my visual students. Wow, that's a sentence. So how did I achieve this balance? I did have a few anchor charts up in some specific areas. However, I did not leave the anchor charts for each individual writing strategy up all the time. I did have the shape of the day up all the time. You know what you need up in your classroom, but keep it to a minimum where you can. And despite the fact that I love color, I had a lot of neutrals in my classroom to provide a calm backdrop to the other visuals on display. A note about these neutrals, initially I used all sorts of different bookcases that I obtained from Goodwill and these were different shades of brown. However, eventually they were all painted white and this had created a far more cohesive environment. I did use a variety of neutrals but my bookcases became part of the walls and that helped. Number five would be seating arrangements. I know tables are incredibly popular with teachers. I was the only teacher in my school to still use desks. I held on to desks because I knew that students need a space to call their own. I believe this really creates a sense of safety and security. However, I also arranged the desks into groups of four to mimic a table. Of course, with the desk being, desks being at different heights and shifting throughout the day, there are some inconveniences to this approach but I still felt it was the most effective. And I personally had very few problems with students playing with things in their desks. It did happen, but not all that often. We were also pretty engaged. I know I am not alone in preferring desks, but you do you. Whether organizing desks into groups of four or using tables, if that is your choice, creating new seating plans each month was a part of my classroom organization and classroom community building. The students never sat beside their besties, and I found that by the end of the year, it was one chatty class. They had all become besties, or a reasonable facsimile of thereof. And by that point, classroom expectations were fully entrenched, and so I was delighted. Opting for tables instead of desks in the classroom, I know that many of you have classrooms where the furniture has largely been predetermined. However, if you choose to use table, or if that is what you have been given, how you use tables still impacts your organization. Are the students sitting across from each other? Or do you have the desks lined up in rows with everyone facing the front? Do students have pre-assigned seats? Or do they come in and sit wherever they want every day? Do they share materials or do they have their own? Where are materials stored? Okay, next up, number six would be Bill. Hey there again. Thank you for spending this time with me. Just a reminder about the free classroom management checklist. Find the link in the description below. Six would be build a strong classroom community together. There is a great deal of research on the relationship between student ownership and engagement. Regardless of whether you have tables or chairs, the classroom organization of your furniture and how the classroom is cared for will facilitate or hinder building classroom community. 
Some people don't think these two things go together, but I really do. When you involve students in keeping the class organized, they practice teamwork, mutual respect, and responsibility for each other. However, creating flexible seating arrangements to be used during appropriate times of the day and rotating assigned seating are also part of both effective classroom organization and building classroom communities. And free time. Do your students know how and where to independently access tools and activities that they can enjoy during free time? This is a powerful purpose of classroom organization. And it takes a lot of the pressure off you during the course of the day. In my class, my students knew how and when to access STEM kits. They knew where they were, would all, there would always be coloring sheets, and they always had access to the entire class library. Oftentimes, there were also interactive elements on a counter near the window, which were associated with a current science or social studies topic. Providing students accessible locations for these activities led to some fantastic learning and community interaction during their free time. Item number seven would be support differentiation with classroom organization. In the writing block, my students use the paper that is most appropriate for them. And when they needed a new piece of paper, they knew where to help themselves. This allowed me to continue one-on-one -on -one conferences without interruption. My classroom library was also completely leveled. I had books that were suitable for K-5 reading levels and my students could easily find books that were a good fit for them. If my students needed a tool, example, a rec and rack, a number line, a quiz and air rod in math class, effective classroom organization meant they knew exactly where to find them. And they also knew where I expected the tool to be returned after class. Uh, number eight would be how to fit the pieces of classroom organization together. All of these elements intertwine for effective classroom organization, and that is what supports classroom management. The way I group desks build classroom community, and those groupings supported multiple aspects of differentiation when they worked together. My students had binders, and the binders were kept in their desks, which meant transitions were quick and painless. Because the majority of my students used their binders effectively, that meant there were a minimum of pieces of piles of paper lying around, which reduced visual noise. I did not need an inbox for every partially finished activity. It went in the binder in their desk. Each binder has section labels under which to file things. So much easier for me. During report cards, we would simply remove the papers from the binder, staple them and put them in one of my bins for classroom organization. Can you see how much my various organizational systems worked together here to support other aspects of effective classroom organization and management? Student desks held binders, binders held student work, far, far away from my desk minimizing clutter. Separators in their binders organized the work. Classroom expectations made the process of gathering the work quiet and simple and manageable. Bins received the work. So simple and effective, yay, and that's just one example. So getting started with effective classroom organization, the classroom organization of the physical objects in the classroom, like desks, binders, tools, and resources, supported the less tangible parts of my classroom organization, like classroom routines and procedures, which in turn meant smoother transitions for effective classroom management. Of course, I had many more systems that worked together efficiently and effectively. All of these systems and classroom organization made classroom management so much easier. So if you don't know where to start, you start with seating arrangements. I would love to say start with organizing your own materials. However, the truth is that the students will be there the first day. All of your materials will not necessarily be. Step one done. Bite-sized chunks will get, help you get started. Now, only look at other classrooms for inspiration never compare. Classroom organization is an essential part of effective classroom teaching. You've got this one step at a time. Thanks for joining me. See you soon. One final thank you for sharing your time with me today. I want to encourage you that growth for a teacher is just like growth for a student, one step at a time. Be kind to yourself and congratulate yourself for each step forward that you take. You have been blessed with an amazing calling. The, the challenges are many, but I'm here to support you. You've got this. With my desire to walk with you in mind, I offer one last reminder. 
If you found this or any other video helpful, I encourage you to download the free classroom management checklist. Find the link in the description below. Thanks for joining me today and I hope to see you soon. Bye now.